Hello everyone and welcome to Upside Down. In today's videos I want to give you a little bit more tips and tricks about how you can render your scenes inside 3ds Max 2021, which helps with developing your project as an artist and also it speeds up a lot your process, especially if you are working for games. For today's purpose of this video I'll be using a model that I've created for a game project that I worked a while ago. I wanted to use this model to demonstrate you some of the features and some of the settings that I'm using because it's very heavy in terms of poly count and it can really illustrate how fast and quick you can see the results in your viewport as well as rendering them at the end. As you can see I already have my model imported as well as I added an HDRI for my environment so that we have some lights. At the moment I'm using everything by the default settings and we will go through some of the features which this rendering allows us to do. First I will open my material editor so that I can show you the current setup. Here you can see that I have one material which is for my building, after that we have one material which is for the HDRI and the last one is for the ground because I wanted it to be a little bit darker than the building elements. Let's first go through the settings for the HDRI. First tip is about the file that we are going to be using. We can load our environment from the menu on the top. At the moment I have a studio environment, but this can be very easily changed by clicking the three dots. After that it will automatically open the presetted environments which come with 3ds Max 2021. I'll select another one which will be the forest as it fits a little bit more. And you can see that it very quickly updated everything in our viewport. Next group of settings we can do with our environment is rotate it or set up the height. We can do it by just pulling up and down the slider, you can see that it updates very quickly or we can set it by giving an exact number. As well we can also mirror our environment horizontally. Next section is going to be about tweaking the appearance of our HDRI. So first thing we can edit our exposure, contrast and another cool thing is that we can also edit the tint that the HDRI gives to the scene. To edit the tint we can just simply click on it and then we can pick a color and you can see that very fast and easy I can edit and add some extra tint to my lights. Of course we can do a color picker and then just pick something which is from the environment like something green and I'll tune it down a little bit. When we are happy with the result we can click OK and now because we already chose something which is not a completely white color we can boost a little bit our exposure. I'll come to the viewport and we'll make it a 1.5. Next setting is going to be with our background. We can click the blur background button in order to create a blurred background. If this is the effect that we are looking for. I can say that for rendering very huge elements like buildings, it looks a little bit weird unless we are making a very close up shot. Also, if you're rendering some products or some close ups of items, this can be a very nice effect. I'll turn it off for now and let's move on another feature that we have. And this is the ground projection. I talked a little bit more about this in my last video. And the last option that I want to talk about from our HDRI backgrounds is to choose a solid color as a background. This can be a very useful feature if you are doing renders for showing off your work in a personal portfolios. The way that we can do it is if we scroll down and you can see that there is a use custom background, we can either use a color or we can use a background image that we've created before. Before jumping into some rendering settings, I would like also to go very quickly into the PBR material. For this purpose, I'll select the material which is applied on the building. And here I wanted to show you very quickly what kind of inputs we can put in our PBR material. Of course, we have our base or albedo. We have metalness, roughness, normal map and emissive. As well, we can put an additional ambient illusion map. Also, if you want to add some elements which have opacity or mask to be cut out, like for example vegetation, you can do it by plugging it into the opacity map slot. One question that I saw was how do I use my maps if they are already packed for Unreal and break them so that I can plug the individual channels to the specific slot inside 3ds Max. Let me show you how you can do it. First I'll import an occlusion, roughness and metallic map. This is a texture that I've created in which all these three channels are being packed. If you want me to make a video on this topic please leave a comment down below. Alright, the texture that I imported is from our Hellblade modeling environment series, so it's not gonna fit perfectly on our model, but I just wanted to use it as an example. We can see that right from the start we have only one pin that we can connect to our material slots, but this can be very easily fixed by dragging from our maps a component, and then we need to connect our pin to our input, and after that we already have the red, green and blue channel that we can connect to our material. In my case I've packed everything with occlusion 
roughness and metallic, so I'll connect them the same way. Now let's go and see some of the rendering settings that we can have for our viewport. To open the viewport settings and adjust our rendering, we can do it by clicking here, going to pair view presets and we have our settings opened. Here first thing that we will change is to put our rendering level to be on advanced. After that in lights and shadows, we are going to change it not to use the default lights but to use the scene lights and then we have a drop down menu with the quality. At the moment you can see that I'm using the default quality which doesn't give a bad result for overviewing your models. But if you want to have more precision into the calculation of your shadows you can go on some of the higher settings. I will put it all the way up just so that I can show you how quickly it works. You saw that it just took a few seconds to calculate everything. Next part is about the progressive sky and that it's something which bothers many people while they are moving around their viewport not to get distracted by all the calculations that are happening all the time. So you can toggle it on and off but of course the moment when you are doing already your final images or the moment that you want to see everything with shadows you need to turn it on then we can toggle on and off our shadows and of course set it up their intensity and I mentioned in the last video that we also have the option to toggle ambient occlusion and play with the settings of it as well. The last part that I want to talk about today is about how you can render your project. The way that we can do this is going to rendering and then rendering setup or we can just click F10 for shortcut. It will open us our render setup. First thing that we need to check is that here from the drop down we have Arnold as our render and after that we can start already playing with the settings down below. First thing is what do we want to render? Do we want a single frame? or we want the whole active segment which is our timeline down below or we just want a range from our timeline. We even have the option to render just specific frames if this is what we want to do for our project. Now I'm just going to render a single frame after that from our output size we can choose the resolution that we want to make the render. I'll go and click the drop down, select an HDTV and render in full HD. When we are ready with our settings we can click render. It took me around 30 seconds to render everything and at the moment I'm using my CPU. Let me show you how you can change to use your GPU. If we go back to the render setup, then we go to system and here we can see that there is a section called device, render device, it's selected CPU, we can change it to GPU and now we can use our GPU for rendering. Thank you for joining me today in my tutorial, I hope that it was useful. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe so that you can follow all the tutorials that I'm making. Leave a like to the video and see you next time.